Let's talk about some changes to MCP transports, which made the protocol significantly more server friendly. In the March 26th update, MCP has now moved away from HTTP plus SSE and now instead uses streamable HTTP. To explain the difference, let's first look at what transports look like before. Here, the client initiates by opening an SSE connection, the server responds with an SSE endpoint event, and this begins the main communication loop. In this loop, the client sends HTTP post requests, the server responds with SSE message events, and this continues until the client closes the connection. Now, let's look at what changed after the update. There are a few stages, so I split the process across several diagrams. The first of these stages is initialization. Here, the client sends a post request to a specified endpoint. The server responds and optionally includes a session ID. Then, the client acknowledges the response and it responds back with a session ID if it was provided. Finally, the server sends back a 202 and this completes the initialization. You might notice there's no long-lived connection here. That's because servers can now provide stateful functionality by making use of that session ID. Instead of keeping an open connection, servers can now expect to be passed a valid ID that they issued. Once initialized, the client can start sending HTTP post requests. The new spec allows two ways in which a server can respond, which I've split here into two dotted boxes. In the first, the world looks a lot like REST. The server just sends back an HTTP response. However, in the second, the server opens an SSE connection and streams back messages. Before finishing, it sends back a response and closes the connection. It's worth noting that the actual body of these requests still conforms to JSON RPC, just like the previous version of the spec. So now you might be wondering, is the protocol no longer bi-directional? What about server-initiated communication? Previously, the long-lived SSE connection allowed servers to send messages to clients whenever, and so far I've only explained how a server responds to client-initiated communication. Well, the spec now states that a GET request essentially subscribes the client to any server updates. It's not required that the server implement this functionality, but if it does, the server will open an SSE connection and send any updates over this connection. What if the client doesn't subscribe? Well, let's go back to the client request diagram. There's actually subtle functionality I didn't mention before. If the server is holding notifications or requests for the client, but the client isn't subscribed, the protocol allows for these to be sent upon a client request in that SSE loop. Note, there should still be a response sent back corresponding to the original request. Now, for completeness, if the client wants to send a notification in which it doesn't expect any content back, it can still do so over an HTTP post. Inside the body, it should specify that this is a notification. So let's quickly recap the features mentioned and why they're server friendly. By the way, this direction for the protocol makes a lot of sense as there will likely be far more types of servers than clients. First, the new version allows for completely stateless endpoints should the server not care where the request is coming from. An example of this might be a calculator MCP server. Second, if a server does need stateful interactions, it can supply session IDs at initialization and clients will use these in all following requests. When clients don't subscribe to updates, servers have a way to pass notifications and requests inside of the SSE loop, but this connection only needs to be opened until we send a response. Overall, this allows servers to maintain less concurrent connections and the machine's hosting servers can become ephemeral. 